Hi, my name's Rachel and this is my first floss tube video. Although it's not my first YouTube video, I also have another channel um, which is mostly mixed media art. Um, but I've been following the floss tube community for probably almost a year now and have become quite heavily involved in doing my own cross stitch. So I wanted to be part of that community and thought I'd make a start in that direction today. So to begin with, I thought um, a good place to start was the Know Your Needlework tag. So I have the questions in front of me and I'm going to work through those and then um, I might do a separate clip to show my um, current project and the very few projects that I've done because I've only been doing this for um, just under a year. So, well, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, the questions on the tag then. The first one says, where do you live? I live in the UK, in West Yorkshire. Um, the second one says, what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher in a secondary school. I teach food and nutrition, and that's what I've done all my life. The third one says, what are your three favourite hobbies other than cross-stitch? Well, as I've already said, um, I have another YouTube channel, which is a creative arts channel. Um, all kinds of mixed media art. I do a lot of art journaling. Um, I work with polymer clay. I've done parchment craft. I make cards. I do lots of different things. I really enjoy making things with my hands. Um, I also do drawing and painting in the more traditional um, fine art sense. Um, <laughs> hesitant to use the word fine art but I brought a couple of pieces so you can see um, the types of things that I do so these are colour pencil sketches that I've done um, I've not done that many of them they, they're quite time consuming for me um, it's something that I do have to work at so anyway that's a peacock butterfly um, this one is a flamingo Again, colour pencil. Um, I'm not sure how much of the detail you'll be able to see on that. I really liked how the feathers came out on this one. Um, then this is a just a graphite sketch, and this is my um, icon picture, my thumbnail picture on my other channel. So. Um, it's usually the channel that I've been commenting on floss tube videos, so you may recognise this sketch. Unfortunately, the the white balance isn't showing showing her in true light. Oh, there you go. She has some freckles there that I quite liked. Um, so that's a, a graphite one. Um, there's a peacock feather that I did. Again, it's hard to see the detail. And there's probably about 30 different colours on on just the, the little feathers there. And this one, I quite liked how this one turned out, which is obviously some apples. So that is um, um, colour pencil work and graphite work. I've done a little bit of watercolour as well, not very much. There's um, these two that I did. This was part of an online class that was about painting pears, so I quite liked how those two came out. I've also done, um, as I mentioned, clay work. This is I like making little books and things like that. Um, these are quite heavily featured on my other channel. So this is a little book with clay covers and it's a little book that you open up. Just get that all the way. And the images inside are just stamped and coloured with um, inks and glitter. Um, I've worked with resin. I have um, this is a resin tile that's the artwork is my own artwork out of my art journal. This one here again is my artwork from a canvas. And they're coated with resin. I did used to sell these um, in my Etsy shop. 
once I'd made them into, I used to make them into fridge magnets mainly. Although they could, I guess, be needle minders. Um, I've also done some folk art painting. So these are on wood. I've not done too much of this. It's something I, I'd quite like to get into a bit more. I do like the folk art style. So there's those um, canvases. This is one that's quite popular on my other channel. Um, this is pearlescent paint, so it's catching the light quite a lot, and it's all textured as well. Um, so that's a 20 by 30 centimeter canvas that um, hangs in my bedroom. And art journaling is probably what I'm most known for on my other channel, I think. Um, this is just one page from my art journal. Um, I chose this one because it's one of the most popular ones on my other channel. And if anybody's interested in seeing more things like that, I will put a link in the video description to my mixed media channel. Um, so, um, other than creative arts, I do enjoy gardening when I've got time for it. I've grown my own fruit and vegetables before, and that's something I'd like to do a little bit more of. I um, haven't done very well with that this year. Um, but in previous years, I've, I've done quite well with that um, in being organised. And reasonable success. I think I've still got a lot to learn with that. And I also play drums. So... Yeah, that's quite a, a range of hobbies. They keep me well occupied, um, along with a full-time job. So, um, yeah, next question. Um, do I have any children? No, I don't have any children, um, but I work in school, so I have about 1,500 children that I see every day, and that's quite enough. Do I have any pets? I do. I have a little black and white cat called Maggie. She is 15 years old this month, in fact. Uh, so she's getting on a little bit in years, but she's my little pal. She sits next to me, whether I'm drawing or painting, um, and keeps me company. What's my favourite movie? This is a hard question um, to come up with one movie, but I think... Uh, I have a few different movies that I, I really enjoy. The, the first Harry Potter movie... I think would definitely be up there. I enjoy the whole series, but the first one, I think, is the one where you're caught up in that world and you learn about the world. So I, I like that one the best. Um, the Wizard of Oz would be up there. Um, Rebecca, Daphne de Maurier's Rebecca would be up there. Um, a very old Haney Mills film called Whistle Down the Wind. I like that. Um, a Liz Taylor film called National Velvet, also had Mickey Rooney in. That's definitely one of my favourite films. Um, I was quite obsessed with horses when I was younger and that film seemed to be on um, around Christmas time in the UK. I remember watching it as a child and yeah, being quite obsessed with it because it had horses in it. And the same with Black Stallion, that was another one that um, I liked because it had horses in so yeah they're probably my favourite films um, mostly I guess apart from Harry Potter which is more recent um, they're mostly films from my childhood so they've got a nostalgic appeal Watership Down actually as well that would be another one um, that was the first film I saw at the cinema I was probably about five years old I'm guessing I don't remember but yeah um, favourite TV show, like a lot of people, I don't watch a lot of TV now, um, I tend to watch, when I do watch something it tends to be, um, on my laptop, so it's usually on through Amazon or another service like that. I do like, um, The Walking Dead, that's one series that I have watched from beginning to end, um, and Grey's Anatomy is another one, and... Criminal Minds, I've watched quite a lot of those. NCIS. I think that's probably about it though. I don't tend to watch um, anything else really. I haven't watched anything else for a long time. So yeah, that's they're probably my favourite TV shows. Favourite music, my music collection is like, again, like a lot of people, is quite eclectic. Lots of different types of music. Um, 
anything from rock, pop music, country music. Um, I think when I started playing drums, my taste in music branched out into things that I probably wouldn't have listened to prior to playing drums because it wasn't really my taste. But sometimes I find now that songs that have a really good drum pattern to play, um, I like listening to now. And I tend to listen probably to the drums more than anything else. Um, so yeah, lots of different things. Um, I'm trying to think what is uh, what is on my um, iPhone. I don't tend to listen to that much music in the house, but travelling to and from music, I usually have my iPhone um, playing through my car. Um, my Chemical Romance is one that springs to mind. All American Rejects, um, Taylor Swift, lots of different different things. I've even got some one-offs where I found people on YouTube that maybe have one or two records on iTunes and I've downloaded them. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of different things like most people. I don't have a, a favourite band as such. I, if I like a song, I like a song. Um, my favourite book. I don't do an awful lot of reading. Um, certainly not fiction. I used to read prolifically when I was younger. Um, I don't find that I have that much time for reading now and I don't think I've found the right type of books. Um, I haven't found any books that really grab me um, lately. I think one of the best books I ever read was By the Waters of Liverpool by Helen Forrester and there's a, a whole series of them. Possibly because I, I was born in Merseyside and Although I didn't live in Liverpool, I was just outside, so I recognise a lot of the places in those books. And it's based on somebody's um, true story, um, going through wartime. So yeah, the Helen Forrest by the Waters of Liverpool is a, a really good read. And the consequent, um, I think there's about five of them in the series, I read them all, but the first one was definitely the best. Um, who inspired you to make YouTube videos? I don't think there is any one person. Um, I mean, this isn't my first YouTube video. It's my first floss tube video, however. So I'm guessing the question is related to that. Um, I think the person that pushed me to do it the most was probably Calico. Um, I commented on her video, um, her latest update video, her July update video, and she asked whether I'd, she saw my, because I was commenting under my other YouTube name, and she said, oh, I see you've got art videos, have you ever considered floss tube? And I was like, yes, I've considered it. Um, and I think what's always held me back is I do have so many hobbies, and I do so many things, and I have a full-time job, that I was like, well, do I really have enough time to show enough progress in enough projects to make it worthwhile having a channel um, and she replied and said well you know some people only update once or twice a year it's all worth sharing so yeah I think she influenced me the most I, I watch a lot of different people um, somebody else I watched I can't remember who it was said that they made videos as a way of tracking their progress and that's kind of how I started my other channel I wanted to keep track of what I was doing um, and the progress I was making in other areas of um, art and creative hobbies so I think I'd quite like to do the same thing even if it is really slow progress and sometimes I think it helps if you, if you can see how much progress you've made um, because it can feel sometimes like you're not getting anywhere fast, um, particularly in cross stitch. It's not known to be a, a quick hobby. Um, so yeah, Calico is the one who inspired me the most, I guess, along with a whole heap of other people that I've been watching. Denkai, I really love her videos. Um, I think she's got a great sense of humour and I enjoy her. I enjoy... Um, Stephanie, whose channel name I can't remember right now, Miss Oso Crafty, 
um, she's inspired me to buy a few bits and pieces as have other people um, Joe Gregoire, Terry, Stitching Petunia the, there's so many different people um, so yeah I just want to be part of what all those people share I guess uh, last question is which word describes you best um, I think I'd have to go with creative because I do so many creative things and my day wouldn't be complete without doing something that's creative so yeah I think creative okay um, I guess then you might want to see some of my projects so I've only been cross stitching for not quite a year I did a couple of projects in my late teens 20s and I kind of found this was one of the first things I did and this was from one of the cross stitch magazines in the UK and this is um, for needles and it's got kind of tatty um, the back I did try and wash this it's I don't know whether they're rust marks or tea's been spilt on it or coffee I don't know but you can see the date there 1995 so that's I think I was yeah I was 20 when I did that um, and that's probably the only thing that I've put an initial and a date on as well so that was one project I did I did do a cushion as well but I don't know what happened to it and I really loved the pattern it was um, kind of a, a round floral pattern with um, kind of like Victorian coloured flowers kind of rich golds and bronzes and um, sage greens and burgundies and things like that and I don't know what happened to it then I also started this piece which is a medieval I think it's called Medieval Sample or Medieval Lady. This was from a book that I bought, a cheap book. Um, and this was one that I started again probably in my 20s, didn't finish it. And then this is also the piece that got me back into cross stitch. And I love those little bunnies and how well you can see them. Um, because I was clearing out my attic and I came across my cross stitching things. And this was there, and it only had maybe, I don't know, it had a few leaves on this bottom plant here that needed doing. And I think that was it. Maybe a few stitches in the border. I'm not sure. So I decided I was going to finish it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do framing-wise, because look how much edge I left. <laughs> um, I guess I can sew some material onto it, or I can think of something to do with it. So I finished it last year, that was one of the first things I picked up and as soon as I picked it up I was like, oh I really enjoy this, um, I'd quite like to do some more and I knew I had one more kit, so this was the kit I had and there was about, there was probably maybe I don't know, a few inches worth in that top corner that I'd done. And I told myself, if I finish this, I will allow myself to buy some more. Um, and if I don't finish it, then I'm not buying any. <laughs> well, I think I got about halfway through and thought, well, you know what, I think I'm going to finish it. So I started on the, the buying spree. But I really enjoyed it. It's on 14 count Asia, which... Um, I guess is what a lot of kits come with it this is available on 28 as well um, and if anybody wanted to stitch it I would definitely recommend the 28 because let's see how close you can get all the, the bird's legs these are all fractional stitches um, on the bird's beak as well the same thing and the little worms and then over on the the chicks mouths they are all fractional stitches too so it was kind of hard going on Ada but I did finish it um, that was finished earlier this year and I did one other piece 
which this was, I put this one on a frame, but it's a temporary frame, you can see from the sides it's not framed properly. This was a piece from a magazine, which I'll try not to get too much glare on it. And the original was done on green fabric, but I didn't like the green against green very much. And it has, if I can show, has lots of beads in it. And that was my first time beading and it also has the border around it is metallic and it's the DMC metallic, <laughs> need I say more? I had already read from a thousand different people about the DMC and how much it's not liked. I agree, I completely agree with that, it was a nightmare to work with. And that was also my first time working on even weave, that's a 28 count even weave in... I think it was a Britney cream. So that's everything I've done. <coughs> um, the piece I'm working on now is it's on a Q snap that I've just taken off the top bit. This is a Joan Elliott. Um, again, my chart's from a magazine, but if you buy the pattern from Joan Elliott, it's called Summer Geisha. It's called something else from the magazine I think Oriental Splendor or something like that um, so she's about three quarters done um, this was my first venture into hand dyed fabrics this is a pole stitches fabric and I've since bought quite a few more and it was also my first time working with Krynik which let's see if we can show that all her purple sash I'm not sure if there's a proper name for that but all her purple sash has the crinic and the sum um, in her hair as well and in the the little motifs on the parasol and there's going to be more down this side as well so her Hopefully that will be done in the next couple of weeks. I started her 20 days ago. And I, I only know that because I joined the Joan Elliott July group on Facebook. And I joined late. So if I'd have joined at the beginning of July, she would probably be finished. Um, but I didn't, so she's not quite finished. And the group is closed now. Or it's been shelved until next year. I think is my understanding. So that is everything. Um, I do have, I have some haul. I could share that, I guess. Um, okay, let me stop this video and I will get my haul and share that also. Okay, time for sharing my purchases. And I've got quite a lot of stuff. Now <laughs> I've just gathered it up, but I'm, Here's my justification. There is no justification, is there? But here's my justification anyway. I'm on holiday from school. It's summer holidays here in the UK. So I'm home to get post, which is rare. So I buy things when I'm off work. And so, yeah, that's my justification. Okay. So I've been eBay shopping. Um, I found this little dimensions kit with lots of uh, um, glare on it unfortunately but yeah this is a um, hydrangea floral dimensions kit comes with 18 count ivory coloured ada which I'll probably keep the ada in, the, in there I know a lot of people change it out and use even weave and I think if it was 14 count and there was a lot of background showing I might well do that because I don't I don't especially like the size of the holes when I look at the the robin piece that I've done I really wish it was on 28 because I think that having worked on 28 now I think I like that better but I I don't mind 18 because it's a lot smaller I do like the little stitches but I don't think I could work on 36 count which would be the equivalent. I think, yeah, well, I've not even worked on 32 count yet, so 
Um, <laughs> I don't want to run before I can walk. Um, so yeah, that was fairly cheap on eBay. And then I got this pattern as well. I got this on Amazon. I saw somebody stitching this and I can't remember who it was. It's the Stony Creek 12 Days of Christmas. Which if I can get the glare off it, you can see, hopefully see that quite well. I really like that. I do have another 12 days um, pattern which is a dimensions kit and I've put a few stitches in it um, and then put it to one side. I'm trying to I'm trying to work out whether I can work on a, a rotation but I get involved in one project and that's what I want to stitch on until it's finished so I don't know I don't think that makes particularly good floss tube videos say here's my one project but we'll see I'm going to try and work on a rotation while I'm off work and I think it'll work better maybe have three projects ten days each I'm gonna I'm gonna think about it anyway this is another one I picked up on eBay which is a dinky dyes pattern and I liked the pattern obviously that's why I got it but it has some specialty stitches just um, Smyrna stitches I think around the edges I think that's the only one on there and then there's just back stitching there's some um, whisper thread on the cat's hat but yeah I wanted to try I would like eventually to do a chatelaine but I've only done I've done cross stitch I will do the Smyrna stitches which <laughs> I um, I've got no experience with any specialty stitches at all and I was hearing people talk about them and I heard about these Smyrna stitches and I <laughs> I thought people were saying Smyrnoff stitches as in Smyrnoff vodka so <laughs> so I keep calling them Smyrnoff stitches for that reason but yeah now I've read the back I know they're not they're not vodka stitches at all so this one here is um, this I think is what I'm going to do next this is from a magazine and I was, when I previously did cross stitch when I was in my 20s I did subscribe to I think a couple of UK magazines didn't stitch a thing out of them had a stack of magazines I don't know maybe two years worth um, two three years worth of subscription magazines and some I'd picked up on eBay as well and I didn't stitch anything from them and then I sold them and I really wish I hadn't now but I've decided because there's so few patterns that I like in the magazines what is better for me is to buy single patterns that were in a magazine instead and then I only have to store this so this is an anchor design um, maybe if I took it out of the package there would be less glare and I just I really like um, I like florals, I like botanicals, I like English countryside, um, I like all that kind of design and this kind of envelops a lot of those things so there's a birdhouse on there, I have a lot of patterns with birds and birdhouses, um, there's obviously the different florals, um, I love the little washing can, I like kind of rustic British countryside items, the little trolls the gardening items and the colours on here just really appealed to me as well sort of the the greys alongside the the coloured elements so I think that is the next thing I'm going to work on um, but if I'm thinking about a rotation I'll need to think about where that fits in again this is from a, a magazine this is a floral design and let's see this is from Cross Stitch Collection March 2012. Again, this is an anchor pattern. Um, I seem to have a thing for, I was looking through the ones that I bought and quite a lot of them seem to be anchor patterns. Um, this one, yeah, again, is an anchor pattern. This is a bird table with British birds. British songbirds, garden birds, which I have 
bird feeders and all of these birds come to my feeders. So I really like that. I have, I have a Marjolaine Baston. <laughs> I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, these are almost identical, but I, I like them both. So that again, um, I'm not sure, well it says cross stitch collection, I'm not sure which edition it was because it's a pull out chart, I think. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't have the, I don't want to show the chart obviously, it doesn't have the magazine edition um, printed on it. The rose one, let me see if that says, this was cross stitch, this one here is cross stitch collection August 2009, if anybody is interested in that. Uh, then I have a kit, this is a Luca S kit of tulips. Again, florals. I just thought this was um, really nice colours. I'm drawn to colour combinations, I think, sometimes more than the actual design, but I, I really thought that was um, pretty. It is um, it's anchor threads that come with these. I'm just trying to look for... It's on 18 count Ada. And it is 35.5 by 26 centimetres. 30 centimetres is 12 inches, so yeah, it's roughly 12 and a bit inches by just under 12. Um, this one is a Lanart kit, um, fuchsia in watercolour, and I saw somebody stitch this. This is on linen, I think, 30 count linen, if I remember rightly. I think so. I'm just looking at the back. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. I think it's on 30 I'm pretty sure it's on 30 count line. But anyway, I saw somebody stitch this and it was just gorgeous. And I have in my collection there's a another pattern that looks very similar that is apple blossom. So I I'm not sure whether they're supposed to go together, but in my mind they go together, so <laughs> Um, yeah, I got that one. Um, this one, again, another anchor design, the British countryside type design, little field mice. I love that cute little mouse there. I'm sorry about the glare, it uh, goes with the territory, I guess, when you're showing things in plastic. But that was um, another one that was an eBay find. It's on 14 count Ada, so I might change that one out for 28 count even weave. Um, I can't really see whether there's fractional stitches from the front picture there, but I'll have a look at the chart and see. And then I also got this, I think, was the best buy. This is Mirabilia's Roses of Provence. And I'd looked at this. Um, well I've looked at it for quite a, a long while after seeing Teresa Little Stitcher um, do this one and for one reason or another I hadn't yet picked it up um, because there's so many Mirabilis I want to do but this one came with all the threads and the beads and the chart and I put it into my cart on so and so to see how much it would be and I think it came to maybe £70 something like that to buy it from so and so I'm not sure whether that was with or without the fabric so because I knew I was going to buy it at one stage I thought okay I'll bid for it and I'll bid maybe £40 um, and that's still saving quite a lot of money um, but I ended up getting it for £33 with all the threads and the beads so that was a, a really good bargain then I got a few digital charts. So the first ones are from a Russian designer that I found her on I found her on Instagram and because it was all in Russian um, it was kind of difficult to see whether she had a shop or anything. Then I found her on Facebook as well. I still couldn't see whether it was a shop, but I kept going back and looking at her patterns. Um, and eventually 
found that she did have a shop, so I was able to buy some. So her name, I'll probably pronounce it incorrectly, so I will show you. Um, Svetlana Sika or Sitcha? I'm not sure, but it's Sika Designs or Sitcha Designs. S I C H K A R. And she designs along with um, another lady, Alexandra, I think her name is. Um, but she has beautiful patterns, and I really liked. She has a few patterns with teacups, and I really liked a lot of them. So, this one again, the bird. Um, yeah, a lot of my patterns have birds or British wildlife on them. Um, and I like kitcheny type ones as well, so this is kind of a mixture of both. But I really like the style and the sort of watercolour effects of that. So that one is the blue tip with um, blueberries. And if I remember, I will put a link to her shop and maybe her Facebook group as well. This one, again... This is the blue tip with the figs, same kind of style, so I wanted both of them, obviously. And I, I love the colours in this, the, um, the colours of the figs really appealed to me. Sort of the purples and the corally oranges on the inside. And then she has, I got four more of her designs, um, which are also cups. Um, this one, if I was going to put one into a rotation, it might be this one because it's still summertime and summer berries are in season. And I, I just love that. I love the colours. Um, so I thought I, I thought <laughs> I'll stitch them all. I didn't buy all of them, um, but I bought my favourite ones. So that was the berry tea. Um, oh, there's the the other lady's name. It's um, Sam, Sam Marina Alexandra. So the first name is not Alexandra. Sam Marina. So I think they... I'm not sure whether one of them does the paintings and one of them charts them. Or they both paint, I don't know. But on the Instagram feed, there's it shows the paintings. Um, but that's Sea Buckthorn Tea. Again, it's the use of colour and the fact that everything's backstitched. It really makes the designs pop. I think this is the first one I saw. Um, and I think it was Pinterest that I saw this one. Somebody pinned it and it started the search of where to get these patterns from. But this is the apple tea, which is very Christmassy looking. With that, I love all the details, the berries and the pine, you know, the open apples with the little pips and the star anise. Then the last one I got is ginger tea. So they were all from, um, I'm going to call her Svetlana because I don't know whether it's Sika or Sitcha or how that's pronounced, but Sika Designs, Sitcha Designs, however it is. Then the, let me see if I can take this out. Um, I also got this pattern which I've been eyeing up for a long time. This is the Fairy Guide or Evening Star from Passion Ricamo. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, and I've kitted this up. So I, the recommended fabric is a pole stitches fabric in Poseidon. So I have the fabric in there, all the threads, um, and the beads. And there's so much petite treasure braid in this. That's not even all of it. That's that's just some of it. Um, so that will be the first time working with petite treasure braid. So that is <laughs> that's my little bit of shopping. I've actually done more shopping than that. Um, a little bit scared to show anymore. <laughs> no, I've got the only other things I've got. I've got some hand dyed fabric. Um, got some from pole stitches I found a couple of pieces on eBay and I made an order the pole stitches ones I 
John Elliott projects that they're allocated to. Um, I did make an order with Chromatic Alchemy and Crafty Kitten just because I wanted to try their fabrics. Um, but I don't yet have those. And I probably have a few more eBay charts as well. So, but that will be, yeah, that's probably it for a while. As I say, I shop when I'm on holiday because I'm in to get the post and I've got more time to stitch. So I think that is plenty for a first video. Um, yeah, there's nothing else I can think of right now. I don't know how often I'm going to post a video. Um, I don't want it to be... What I don't want is to have a channel, another channel, where I feel pressurised to make videos because my mixed media channel has kind of got that way. It's got quite a lot of subscribers. Um, and I know people with the best intentions post when you're making a video, but when you've got an inbox full of, when you're making a video, when you're making a video, <laughs> you kind of feel this pressure to perform. And yeah, I don't always feel like making videos. Well, I, I'm, I make the videos, it's the editing I don't like. So I think Floss Tube is quite good because next to no editing. My other channel, everything's in time lapse, it has music and voiceover, and it takes forever. Whereas here I can just talk, press upload, job done, no editing. The only editing I've got here is literally to put two two clips together, that's it. That's five minutes, no more editing. So I might update once a month. Um, I'll probably do a stash video because I like watching those and I've, yeah, I've accumulated more than more than I should have let's say um, I am one of these people that gets into a hobby and has to buy everything to go with it everything because it might be discontinued and then what will I do yeah I'm that person even though at the beginning I was like okay I'll allow myself 10 10 projects 10 charts and that's it no more until the stitched well that, I don't think that lasted beyond a week so I'll try and, yeah, I'll try and do maybe a stash video I might do. I've got quite a lot of dimensions kits, if anybody wants to see those. I've got other kits, and then I've got patterns, and then I've got, I'm just looking at my boxes of stuff that are in this room. Um, I probably won't show fabric and things like that, because it doesn't show true to colour, and, and I'm not sure how many people will be interested in that. I might show it occasionally, you know, if I've got something new, but I'm not going to go, here's a piece of 28 count cream fabric. I don't, I don't think anybody wants to watch that. Um, and I'm going to think about a rotation. I want to start the um, Bianca Rose sampler. I'm just trying to find it now. This one. Because I've, I've, I've kitted this up already. I've decided on the fabric, I've got all the threads for it, so I want to start this. I've got my geisha that is ongoing, and maybe put in one of the one of Svetlana's patterns. I quite like that one. Um, or the berry one, maybe do the berry one. And that would be three. And I think because I've got one, let's see how big these are. These are kind of like... Uh, well this is nearly 8 by 6 if I rounded it up so these patterns are not that big so that would be a quicker finish this one will take a bit longer because this is bigger so I've got a big one one that's nearly finished one that's quick to finish that might work for me I don't think it would work if I had too many huge projects because I wouldn't see the progress and I feel that if I'm doing an update, you kind of need to see something. So anyway, I'm rambling now, and I'm sure <laughs> you don't want to hear that any longer. So I'll end it here. Thank you if you have made it to the end, and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you again, and hopefully showing you some stash and some progress. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.